Tuesdays used to be very bland. But now in the Andy Farrell era, we get the team to talk about it. That is exactly the reason why he does this. Definitely not for any for sort us. of, yeah. uh, pra uh, what is it, paralysis by analysis was the, the phrase used last week when it came to late teams. Um, so he said... Oh, did he actually have a, a... There was something negative about late teams? It wasn't just a... He says sometimes there can be, yeah, paralysis by analysis, and that is why... Uh, and then we overthink it ourselves. A small bit, I would, I would have thought, yeah. And, uh, like, obviously, it was a good Warren Gatlin move when he was in the Six Nations, name your team early. Andy Farrell is now doing it. Nobody really cares about this, but last week there was like a... There's always been a massive battle between the various papers to get the team first, because, like, everybody wants to know who's in the team. It's a big talking point, and it seems like it's um, it's been an important kind of war over the years, but nobody got the full team right last week, did they? Nobody did. Uh, and some newspapers even went for the replacements, which I always think is a big... Oh, you got to uh, go for it. Go big move. or go home. Yeah, especially for a coach's first game to to speculate about the replacements was a fairly confident move and uh, you know I applaud that but ultimately some of them were wrong yeah um, everybody thinks they have the team again today it's always possible just to, to give yourself a bit of wiggle room um, so it looks like we're going to have the World Cup team except minus Rob Kearney that's Gary Ring Rose that's what we're getting Gary Ring Rose is injured Rory Best is retired Sorry, yeah, so Herring and Larmer, really. But, like, there was was there one game where Aki and Henshaw played together? No, Henshaw was injured for a good bit of it. Did Ringrose play every minute? No, uh, Aki and Henshaw started the small game, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, so, it, like, I mean, it's not a million miles away from a World Cup team. Did Rob Carney play every minute? He might have. Um, for some reason, Rob, Jordan Larmer was too good to even get a, an opportunity to start one of those other games. Did he start the Russia game, maybe? Possibly, I, I, I can't remember. It's, I've kind of filed it under... Irrelevance at this point. Basically, the team like you would have picked if Joe Schmidt was in charge this weekend. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. like it, yeah. But it, like there are there are picks that are based on form as well. Like you look at some of the changes, like the number eight jersey was up for debate this week because Kellen Doris was injured. I think that's picked on form. I think CJ Sander going to number eight, Ireland's best player at the weekend. Fair enough. Peter O'Mahony did well. He starts. Fair enough. I think. You'd say Max Deegan's form up to the. Started, started. So Peter Marty obviously has the opportunity in that game mm -hmm. because he has the opportunity in that game. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're like you're into that kind of your own logic is backed up by the decision that you've made. So you're reaffirming your own decisions as opposed to going, okay, well everything we saw up to that point was that Max Egan was driving Caelan Doris on and was nip and tuck with him, and Caelan Doris was your first choice last week. So mm -hmm. you could have had Stander at six and Max Egan at eight. Possibly could have, but I think that I, I like I, I completely maintain that Scotland was the opportunity to do this thing they're, because they're crap. Yes, and yeah. like this would like I, I, I see I see the logic. It was somewhere. Cooney should have started last week. Well, I and, see. Th and that's not hindsight. We were saying that in the build up to the game. No, sure, but very, various papers are saying, oh, it's too. It's, this game's too serious for us to make any changes. But people want changes to happen because it gives us a better chance of winning. It's not just change for the sake of change. No one wants change for the sake of change. Well, we kind of do a little bit, but, you know, 10%. But 90%, you want change to win. For sure, but sometimes... This isn't about building for four years. Uh, so sometimes you do have to put, put a feeler out and see if somebody will sink or swim at international rugby. And, like, I'm not saying that Max Deegan is in that situation, because I think we can all agree that he is going to have a fairly good test career. I just think on, on if you're picking on the very recent form, Peter O'Mahony deserves to start. I've got no issue whatsoever with him starting this weekend. I think going into the tournament, there had to have been question marks. But Max Deegan is bringing Leinster form up against a player who has, I, I will accept, past great Ireland form. Credit in the bank, yeah. Like, and I think that's important. And I do think winning this game is obviously hugely important. I, it, I don't think anybody will disagree with that. So I think that there's, if it was a decision between Deegan and Peter O'Mahony, I know there could have been a bit of a positional juggle, I think O'Mahony wins that battle. And if that is the correct team, I think he's got the back row right. Um, as Japan as it looks. It looks a bit Japan. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Like, we're, uh, okay, one of the things that came up on the show last night was the lack of excitement around the Aviva generally um, in the stadium during the game, before the game, and after the game. And it's just easier for us to get behind new stuff. And also, like, comeback story. So apparently there's a huge roar when Dev Toner came off the bench. Um, but I, look, I don't know. I don't know.
Big, big Roar when Cooney came off the bench. Diviva needs more narrative, is what you're saying. You need, Diviva needs to, like, uh, let's get behind the new kid. Again. Let's have let's have an angry either Peter Marnie or Stander. Stander's not going to get dropped now after the performance last week, probably. Um, so think about the Roar when Deegan comes off the bench. Yeah, but see. Uh, like if, that, if, if, if Devin not, Toner so, coming off bring, brings this totemic I think, noise from the, the stands, Max Deegan will do the similar thing. So my point wasn't about finishers. My point was about having nobody be certain of their place to drive standards on. So yesterday the, the uh, two scrum halves were pulled up together and it, I think the whole point of this is that these are driving each other on. That's that, like Conor Murray is going to become a better player this year because somebody's breathing down his neck finally after nine years of being a shoe-in. Like having Peter O'Mahony breathe down the neck of Caelan Doris or Max Deegan. Yeah, that's what happened last week. Yeah, and and so it would have been really interesting to see what would have happened with Caelan Doris playing 60 minutes and Peter O'Mahony roaring on and going, come on. Okay, that would have been interesting. I accept. But we wouldn't it be great to see that this week we too. Have to also realise that Peter O'Mahony got dropped last week and then he played his way back into the team. That is that is the point of your argument that you know you put these guys on the bench. They pr they prove that they're good enough to get back into the starting fifteen. But and Peter like, O'Mahony played his way back into the starting fifteen. Granted, he got a bit of fortune because Galen Doris is injured. Yeah, but so he was the best available opportunity on the recent form. It's only one well, game, Stegen and it's a game that that Max Egan didn't get an opportunity. Max Egan might have been a better eight on, don't know. on the bench. He might have. Exactly. So. Uh, so let, let's see. Let, like, let, let us you, see. You, you didn't have the confidence last week to pick him, so pick him this week. Um, I think Peter Mahoney has proven your exact point. You, you took Instagram abuse for saying that some of our best players should be on the bench. Peter Mahoney, huge credit in the bank, as you said, on the bench. We, wait, comes in. I'm, so again, I, I wasn't saying that we should have a team of finishers. I'm saying that we should have no, we shouldn't be as wedded to a first. So this first 15 is the first 15 you would have picked, like, 18 months ago, if you were asked for it. So let's assume Andy Farrell's second home game. Pick the team, right? Everywhere do it. I'm penciling in six, mm. seven, and eight. Nine, ten. Except this isn't his starting team because, in his view, his back row was last week. And Peter O'Mahony is not a starter. Like, th this is not his first choice back row, let us accept. Uh, he's, he's fallen upon his Japan back row, Schmidt's Japan back row. But let's not forget here that Peter O'Mahony was dropped from the starting team. I know like being involved in the, the squad is, 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 a, is an important part and, and not gone entirely, but I, I think that's an important thing to, get, to bear in mind. Yeah, I'm just not so sure. Give us your views, hashtag OTBAM. Um, just one thing about the uh, Aviva as well, the lads were talking about it last night. Um, Johnny Ward had, had tweeted that um, it was his first Six Nations experience and he was able to bring beer to the seat. Okay. He was a bit, um, a bit miffed at this, thought that maybe that was, you know, some, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it was sporting apartheid that the the rugby crowd are allowed to do it, but the football crowd aren't, was essentially uh, what he was getting at. And then um, the lads had a conversation last night as well about pints and just the kind of general stream of people, you stand up, you sit down, you stand up, you sit down, you stand up, you sit down, uh, which is kind of what it's like. Um, and uh, Kieran Cunningham made the point that it's a very corporate affair that a lot of people are bringing clients to the Ireland game and so therefore it's different from the club matches. Club matches are actual rugby fans who are going to the game and who are therefore are a bit more into it and the atmosphere actually at the club matches might be significantly superior to the atmosphere at the rugby matches. Yeah, I, I think like Leinster Ulster for example at TV last year, pretty good atmosphere. There's one easy fix to all of this, just have the pints go to the seats. Amer American football style, baseball style, just have somebody with a big tray around their neck. Serving drinks and serving snacks to the people in the seats. It's a good idea. Jonathan, uh, stand up. So you fixed the problem in one fell swoop. Exactly. And now, what about the problem of them having to get up and go for a piss every fifteen minutes because they're getting drinks to the uh, seats? That is a, a very different proposition altogether. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure what to do with that. The Whitnell and I. The. <laughs> <laughs> There's always an answer in width and I'm like, uh, okay, so you fixed that, right? Just one, one brief point about this. Um, Alan Quinlan has been talking about this before from 2013 all the way back. He talked about, um, he was part of the commentary team. He went off to the toilet at uh, the start of the second half because he'd been doing a halftime analysis. And when he came back, uh, uh, outstanding outside, the game has started. It's an Ireland-England game, I think. Ireland 6-0 down at the start of the second half. People milling about queuing for a pint for food and standing there looking up at the TV in the concourse while behind them the thing they're looking at the TV and they're like they're waiting there they're not like rushing back to their seat and the atmosphere is not great there's like a, there isn't there is a bit of an issue with with these games that sometimes the, everybody's just a little bit too 
posh to posh, a little bit too polite to cheer. Yeah, and it doesn't seem to be a captive audience quite often. I would say that people can do whatever they want to do, though, and if going for a pint and missing five minutes at a rugby is your thing, then I think fair dues. Uh, I think that because the football fans don't have the opportunity to bring a pint to their seat, they're therefore more of a, a captive crowd because they're not going to miss anything. Whereas, like, it's only really going to be five minutes. You don't have to down a pint outside, and it does make an awful difference. Mike Ashley's had 